You buckle up your kids. What about your dog? Alarming research announced today by the NRMA shows that close to half of all dog owners don't restrain their pets in a car. Even worse, the vast majority of those trying to do the right thing are using faulty harnesses. Incredibly, just two out of 25 harnesses passed the gruelling NRMA crash testing, both this way and even more importantly, according to the NRMA's chief researcher Robert McDonald, they passed this test. The main testing involved uh, dropping the dogs from a height uh, up to a reasonable speed. The highest we can get in our centre is 35 kilometres per hour. But just about all of the commonly available harnesses failed at 35 kilometres per hour. Uh, you know, where you see the, the actual uh, webbing has failed, or these plastic clips themselves have failed, which is what I suspect would happen. What did the um, products that actually worked do differently? Well, um, they're a bit too... The, the ones that worked tend to have wider webbing, less attachment clips. Uh, this this uh, roadie harness only has a single attachment clip that goes around the waist of the dog rather than the chest where all the load is. So it has nice big wide webbing which tends to spread the load, very strong stitching. And it's uh, generally a well-made thing and it's, real, it's not significantly different in price to the ones that people buy every day from their pet stores. The second harness also passed the NRMA testing. However, it's aimed at much larger dogs and comes with an equally larger price tag. And while the media contingent focused on the nitty-gritty of the crash test dummies, the real canine catalyst for the NRMA's latest tests and incidentally the latest dog to be rescued by Chief Researcher Robert McDonald, demonstrated her skills and the reason why all pet owners should consider getting a roadie for Christmas. Because it seems like, just observationally in Sydney, quite a few people with little dogs like to travel with them on the front of the lap. And remember, dogs, most cars have airbags these days. It's an extra hazard for both you and the dog if the dog's between you and the airbag. Uh, so it's not, not healthy for either. And just in case it comes up in Trivial Pursuit, currently there are no laws requiring pet restraints in cars such as there are for kids, except that dogs mustn't interfere with drivers, plus dogs on the back of utes must be leashed. So do we need new laws? I, I think there's a, a case for, uh, for making sure that animals are properly restrained, whether we try and just make people more properly informed, make sure they've got products that work, and try and encourage them to use them rather than bring in specific animal restraint laws, because then this makes it more difficult to actually see what's in the car uh, from outside. The cars up tinted windows and high waistlines, you can't really tell what's going on inside the car. A practical solution to a huge problem, and it doesn't require politicians for a change. What do you think? Can Aussie pet owners do the right thing without someone wielding a big stick?